Hello! So, welcome back to the very first episode of this photo gallery series. So, as you can see, this is the design we're going to be building over the upcoming videos. So, let's get on with it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this off. In fact, before I do that, we'll just go through and look at all the different elements. So, if I just zoom in, we've got like the navigation up here with a couple of stars. Then we've got this nice big blocky text and then we have some body copy here and what you may notice is just on each of these ones you've got this nice little shadow that makes it look like they're lifted off the page so that's that portion up here in the top right hand corner we've got these ribbons and that says twitter and that says facebook obviously so there'll be links to twitter and facebook and if i zoom back out You've got a massive gradient in the middle here that basically makes all the elements lift off the page. And we have two buttons here. So these this will be the buttons for a slider. So you can have just you can have more than eight images and they'll slide backwards and forwards. And then we have the actual uh, images themselves. Now this can be used uh, as a gallery or it can be a portfolio. So if you've got any work uh, that you do like design sites or any sort of design you can put those in place instead of having the cars or whatever you want to put on yours and at the very bottom down here well in fact on the actual images we've got this nice sort of shadow again which makes the images look like they're lifting off the page and gives a bit more depth to the actual image and if we come down to the bottom got this little uh, designed by Matt Saunders uh, 2011 so again you can put what you like so with all that being said, all we need to do is actually get rid of this and we need to start afresh. So what we're going to do, we're going to click File, New. So we're going to create a document with the following dimensions. It's going to be 1,280 pixels in width and the height will be 800 and the resolution will be 72. And the background color, will just set that to white. It doesn't make a vast amount of difference anyway. And click on OK. So here's our document. Just before we start creating anything, you want to make sure that you've got the font installed if you want to use the same font that I did for the actual design gallery uh, heading. So there'll be a link to that in the description below where you can download it. So once you've got that installed and you're back to this point, we want to basically start adding in the, the colors for the background. So I'm going to go to the layers panel here. I'm just going to unlock this background layer. So it's now just a standard layer. And we're going to double click on it and we're going to pull up the uh, layer styles and we're going to go to color overlay and we're going to change we can change it to the following color. So I've got a list of all these down uh, so it's a bit easier to do. So 3A, 3C, 3E and then click on OK. So that's the background in place. So the next thing we really want to do is be if we start at the header and then we can work our way down and add all the different portions in so I'm going to go to the layers panel over here and I'm going to create a folder now I'm going to call this funnily enough header so we keep all of our header styles in here and it's just easier if we want to move things or turn things off and all of that good stuff so I'm going to create a layer on the inside and I'm also going to grab the marquee tool now so I was going to make a video about keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. Now it's a lot quicker to use the keyboard than it is to keep moving your mouse over here to do things and then moving it back. So if you want to get to the marquee tool, just press M on the keyboard and that's it. You've selected it. Or for example, you want to go to the text tool, just press T on the keyboard. So on and so forth. If you want to go back to the move tool, press V and so on and so forth. So we want the marquee tool and I'm going to open up the info palette over here and we need to create a header of about 33 pixels so I'm just going to click and drag all the way across and then drag down until you can see the height uh, on the info palette get to 33 which takes a bit of getting used to moving it ever so slightly so there's 33 now I'm going to close the info go to the layers so I'm just going to hit Alt and Backspace, and what that will do, that will fill the selection with your foreground colour. So mine happens to be white at the moment, and now I can deselect that. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little, just so we can see it here. Now obviously we don't want it to be white, so we want it to be a slightly different colour. So I'm going to double click on the layer itself, which brings up the layer styles one, one more time. And again, we're going to give this a colour overlay. And this time, the colour is going to be 2D. 
2E30. So it's, it's just a darker shade of the previous color. And then we're going to OK that. So I'm going to double click on layer 1 and just call this header BG. So we know which one it corresponds to. Now I'm also going to create a layer just below that or above, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to collapse the layers panel down. So I'm going to grab the line tool, which is inside of here. So just hold your mouse down and then it will pop out the little menu. So I want to create two one pixel lines underneath the header. So if you look here, the weight is set at one pixel. So I'm just going to click on the left hand side and you can see we get the line started. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and you can see it snaps to a straight line. And it's going to drag all the way across like this. So it basically goes off the edge, not too much, but it just goes off the edge and let go. So now if we go to the layers panel, we've got a shape and it, it, the color of that shape is actually white because again, that was my foreground color, as you can see here. So I'm just going to nudge it up with the arrow key. So it just becomes below the actual header. Now we need to change the color of this because obviously it's not the right color. So I'm going to double click on the white square here, which will give me the color, the color picker. And we're going to give it the following color. So it's going to be 3A. 3C, 3E, which is the colour of the background, main background, it's like that. Now all I'm going to do is just drag the one we just created and create a copy. So I'm going to double click on the brown square, which again brings up the colour picker, and I'm going to give it a different colour this one, so it's going to be 2D, 2E, 3 which is a lighter colour, and it's going to nudge that down one pixel so it's just one tap of the arrow key down. And now if I just click away, you can see we have the, the header, which is the dark color. We have a light color and a dark color. And that just makes, the, makes it stand out a little bit more uh, when it's finalized. So with that in place, we now need to work out the, the width of what the site's going to be. Now, I normally design sites at 960 pixels. So we'll stick to that convention. It's sort of standard uh, nowadays anyway. So what we'll do is we'll go down over here to the rectangle tool and if we click this arrow next to the sort of star and we're going to put in here width of 960 and just press enter and if we just click on the on the actual document it creates a, uh, a shape for which was 960 pixels wide so if I just let go of it there like that so now we just need to align that in the middle of the document so that's easy enough to do so we want to click on the actual shape so this one here and we want to select the background layer as well now what this will do this will allow us to use these commands up here to align things so we're aligning this shape to the background and we're saying here we want to align it horizontally so if we click that you can see that's snapped right in the middle of the document now and now all I need to do is grab a ruler snap it to one side snap it to the other and then now, the shape we just created, we can get rid of that, we don't need that anymore. And we now know that's going to be 960 pixels uh, from either side of those guides. So with that being said, if we now go up to the header and we create one more layer, and this is going to be our text layer for the actual navigation. So I'm going to zoom in. As you can see here, we've got the guide. So I'm going to grab the text tool. And for the actual font for the copy and the navigation, it's actually going to be Arial. So I'm just going to click here. So I'm going to put it in capitals, so home, and then put probably about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. About 10 spaces in between. And then put in services, and if I can't even spell services, and then another 10. Portfolio. And then contact again you can put uh, different ones in if you like and then if we just click ok on that and if we just nudge that down into place we want the actual home to start on the marker here on the left hand side so the font size we're going to use for this will be the following so i'm going to grab the text tool again select it all uh, and then we're going to do about 16 pixels like that and then just nudge it into the middle of the actual design we'll come back later uh, and tweak a few things once we've added other elements to the actual page so if we just zoom out like that so you can see we've got the navigation in 
the next portion I think we should add will actually be the big gradient in the middle of the actual design so again click on the layers panel and then just do this just above the background layer I'm going to create a new layer so make sure you've got layer 1 selected here and then we want to go to the gradient tool over here so if we click that you can see we have some options up here so we want this second one in which is called a radial gradient we also want to make sure our foreground, foreground color down here is selected to white and then when we come up to this option it will then give us some uh, choices so we've got here we want this one which is white to transparent so to create this gradient all you have to do is click uh, hold on the shift key and it keeps a straight line and then if you let go like that you'll notice it creates a gradient but the problem that you have with this is that it's very nice it's created it but you've got a issue when you come to resize it so if I do control T and then if I do that you'll notice we have a problem here where it's cut off because the document was only so big and the gradient was a lot bigger um, so it's cut it off so the best way uh, I can think of doing this there's probably better ways but this is the way that I do it so we're going to go up to image and we're going to go to canvas size so at the moment it's at 1280 by 800 I'm going to change that up to 3000 by 3000 and then OK that and as you'll see now we've got a massive document like this so make sure we're back on the layers if we click on the layer that we want the gradient to be on and we click on the gradient tool one more time I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to click and drag up about probably the length of the, the, the document like that and let go and that creates quite a big uh, gradient image now but now this time when I do control T and I bring it down if I just move it up you can see we've got a perfect uh, radial gradient there so if I'm going to bring it down a little bit more so it fits the document so like that now if I zoom in all we have to do now is bring down the opacity because it's way too much so you probably want to bring it down just for now we'll take it to 25 now with that in place we can move it around and do what we like but we need to get rid of all this excess uh, that we've created so just to do that I'm going to click here on the crop tool and I'm going to basically crop around the whole document like that so you'll know it will snap to the sides and then all you have to do is just tap on the enter key and we're back to where we were but this time we have a perfect gradient uh, radial gradient without any dodgy edges so with that being said what I think I'll do I'll leave the the video here for now and in the next video we'll start to add in the main heading and some of the copy and then in the upcoming videos we'll add in all the ribbons and all the different icons and all of that good stuff so as usual guys thanks for watching please leave any comments below feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video